All right, welcome back to the Sip the Seller podcast. And today we're going to be recapping the um, Ravens versus the Cleveland Browns game. Uh, we didn't pull it out this time. Uh, two weeks ago, we did pull it out. Uh, game ended. We lost by two points by a score of what, um, 22 to 24. And uh, let's get into the recap and then we'll talk about, you know, some other things at the end. Uh, statistically, um, Freeman rushed for 64 yards, Huntley had 45, and a few other scattered runs, and that put us over 100 yards for the day. Uh, Lamar got hurt. He was 4 for 4 when he got hurt for 17 yards, and Huntley came in and went 27 for 38 for 270 yards. Um, so Huntley did a did an okay job other than those two turnovers. The fumble, the fumble, um, the sack fumble, I don't think it was his, his fault. Um, tackle got beat, which is nothing new. And the fumble where he was scrambling, that is all his fault. He got you got to put the ball away or throw it away at some point. That's all his fault. So one is he, one is definitely his fault. The other one I don't think is his fault is on the tackle. But what can you expect from our tackles right now? Uh, receiving wise, Mark Andrews at 11 targets, 11 catches, 115 yards. Uh, Rashad Bateman, who finally got some spin, uh, eight targets, seven catches, 103 yards. This is about time. It's about time. Um, Defense, uh, defensively, stat-wise, Avery had an interception, which is my boy AA, and um, we'll get into. Uh, let's look at the tackles and stuff. Defensive tackles. Uh, Brandon Stevens, who was all over the place, led us with eight tackles. Westry had six. Clark had six. And it ain't really saying a lot when your your DBs are leading you in tackles right there. And Bynes came in with six. Avery had five. You don't get you get two front seven guys in the top six in tackles, and that's Bynes at six and Oway at five. Everything else is a DB. But, you know, not to just straight trash the defense. Defense that gave up 17 points. And pitched a shutout in the second half. So we, we'll talk about defense a little bit later, but let's go into the offense and, and what we saw. Um, early in the game, I don't really know what we were doing. We were um, running out there with our same old base plays, I guess, trying to feel out and fish and see what they were going to do. And um, they were hitting us in the mouth. There was a third and five, and I was, and I remember watching, saying it on the live stream, probably finna run a quarterback power. Bam, quarterback power stopped. So you know, same old ragged plays come through, come through, and then Lamar gets hurt. Then right now everybody's like, oh snap, oh snap, oh snap. So uh, Hundley comes in, and you know his first couple drives are, are not very good, but then he starts to find a rhythm and comes in, and, and like I said, finishes with. 270 yards, made some good throws, made some good plays. Other than that one mistake where he fumbled, I think Huntley played a, a, a damn good uh, job in a relief role. Um, receivers, and I'm including Andrews and receivers. You can't ask Andrews to do much more than what he did. 11 targets, 11 catches. And he did have one drop, but it was a flag on that play, so it didn't count as a drop. But um, 11 targets, 11 catches, 115 yards. Uh, Bateman. Like, I don't understand why this cat has not been... If he can do this, why has he not even been on the field? Because I understand Sammy's a vet, and Sammy, you know, is is a guy. But, man, this is the only cat we got can catch 50-50 balls. If you look at some of them routes, he wasn't open. The play where he uh, should have had a touchdown, he was not open. He just went over top of the guy, got the ball, made a miss, and damn, they got in the end zone. And some of his routes, he, he is open. But he's the only cat we got that can win 50-50 balls at a receiver position. Mark can win them. But at the receiver position, it's the only cat we got. So why is he, he – the dude didn't even play till the last couple minutes of the first half. I don't know what these cats up in the box or personnel, people, I don't know what they think. He, he, must, he must be hard by practice. Got to be. And then get in the game and do that. He got to be laying eggs in practice for him to be sitting there and then they don't put him in until we desperate. But I digress. Um, running back wise, Freeman, you know, Freeman did what he could do. You know, Freeman's an older guy and he getting in there and Freeman played with a lot of heart, a lot of effort, a lot of toughness, a lot of tenacity. And again, he ended up with 64 yards and he was the lead rusher from both sides. Freeman was the lead rusher for both sides. Chubb had 59 and he had some other cats, cats with um, 20, 14, and 5. But Devontae Freeman led the game in rushing with um, 64 on 13 carries. This is right at five yards a pop. Um, on the defensive side, early, early in the game, we the referees was whooping us. 
the the DPI by Chris Chris Westry. Bull bull crap. Bull crap call. Um somebody else got a bull crap um DPI too. I can't remember who it is. But that one from Westry set the tone for them to get their first touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. You take that touchdown away, they lose. If they get three points that drive, they lose. So that was a big call in the game when you sit back and look at it. Big call. Um, Calais Campbell went down. I, I just, I can't tell you how, how happy I am with the, the defensive guys that second half. From that fact, middle of the second quarter on to the rest of the game. They gave up no points and not a lot of offense from, from the Browns. And the Browns are, if I'm not mistaken, the number one rushing team in the league. And they did that without Calais, for the most part without Calais Campbell. My, my guy got an interception, Avery. Um, Westry, you know, he gave up some gave up some plays, but he also made some plays. Um, and the, the front front seven as a whole, no one really to single out. They just, they stepped up. They stepped up. And that game could have got away from us. That game really could have got away from us. But I, I don't have anything negative to say about the players that, that wore purple and black yesterday. Now, the other cats that wore purple and black, I need y'all ass whooped. Just like that. The elephant, is the, the elephant in the room for me is being down, you were down what? Let's see. 15 points. You were down 15 points. I don't remember the number of the score. You were down 15 points. You get a touchdown, and you're now down nine points. Why are you going for two now? Because if you don't get it, there's almost no hope because you're still down two scores. Why not kick the field goal, go down seven? Go down seven. Then you still can maneuver and stuff and you know get a stop and get the ball back. Then you go for two when you have to. And then if you miss it, you do the onside kick. Even though we got the onside kick, which was, you know, a hell of a kick by Tucker. But I just don't understand. This is two weeks in a row. The decision to go for two, rather to go for it or to kick it, has blown up. Has blown up. And both of those are on the head coach. Both of them on the head coach. Now, last week when we went for two, the play call, I think, by Giro was good. I do. This week when we went for two, I don't really understand what was going on right there. You put everybody on the one side, short side of the field and you roll to it. And they got a thousand people over there to defend. He has nowhere to throw the ball. Really, he literally had nowhere to throw the ball. Literally. So the, uh, the guys that are not wearing pads are selling us. The guys that are, and I, I, you know, being in the profession, I used to try to take up for them. I did because I understand. When you put stuff in and sometimes they don't execute it right and and you know on paper the stuff should look right and it should work in your mind you tell yourself if i schematically do this and everybody do their job this should work i understand that and that's why i was taking up for them as much as i was and but for decision making i can't do it no more i can't why is bateman not playing the two you know go for two the two point conversion issues and then why don't we have a plan to attack people? And I don't know how I don't know how much truth or sarcasm was that when he was saying that he don't script plays because everybody play them different. I was hoping that was sarcasm, but you at least gotta have a plan that if they play you, you know, whatever they play the most, at least have a plan to attack that. At least, at least, at least in your script you see different formations and you can kind of tell what they're gonna be in for the rest of the game, but. The, the, the people that are not wearing the pads in purple and black are blowing us. And, you know, before I, you know, get upset and get in on, run on a tangent or whatnot, I'm going to go ahead and end it. This is my recap. <laughs> for those of you watching on YouTube, for those of you listening on the Sip and Tatted Podcast, I appreciate you guys, man. Uh, videos coming out this week soon, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Friday. But um, like, comment, share. Uh, if you're new, subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified when they drop because they will be randomly um that's it man i'll see you guys later love you guys appreciate appreciate uh, getting me to six thousand. peace